Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Talk Now Radio, uh, listener supported radio where information never sleeps. We're brought to you by Revolution Radio, also listener supported radio where no topic. Uh, actually, I got that backwards. Mine was no topic is taboo, and Revolution is information never sleeps. And pardon me while I slap my tongue around a few times and get it all straightened out. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, I'd like to say that I notice here we're on like 153 short of the monthly goal for the uh, donation meter. I think we're doing a great job on that. we still got a few days for the end of the month. Um, also, we're going to be talking to John, uh, Gordon Johnny Noto today, but before we get started, and he's saying, telling me that he's got uh, proof that Planet X is definitely near. We're going to hear what he has to say. I want to thank real, everybody real quick like for all your prayers and support during my time of need. Of course, I'm going to have this illness with me until I'm passed on, but I have now gone four weeks hospital-free, and I think your prayers are helping to support me in that. I sure hope so, and we're going to keep going and going until I can't go no more. There is probably going to come a time that I will not be able to breathe enough to talk enough to get through a show, but I'm going to put that time off as long as I could possibly put it off. So, Gordon, how are you doing today? Well, I've been better and I've been worse, but I got to say this, voice. God bless you, and I, I hope that the angels encircle you with their wings and give you the strength to continue right until the end of the world, which might not be that long. <laughs> <laughs> and not at the rate this world's going anyway. Yeah. yeah. It seems like each century goes by or each decade goes by, uh, we sleep, slip further into depravity. Oh, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's true, but you know what it is? It's the... It's, it's what they always said it was going to be, the last war between good and evil. Well, it uh, seems to be on a build-up to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've been on before talking about extraterrestrials and how many contacts Janet and I have had. And, um, and she's in contact with the Zetas. And I've been in touch with the Pleiadians. And whoever wants to telepathically tell me something, I'm never sure exactly who that is, but... Sometimes I am, but usually I just learn things by uh, hearing them in my mind or they just come to me. And um, many times I've opened my mouth without even realizing that I knew something about that. And then I hear my own words and go, oh, my God, how did I do that? But I was, I've was i been trying to do that, so it's no surprise that it actually happened. It means I succeeded. Well, how many different groups are out there that's visiting us? Well, there's over 1,000 unselfish species of extraterrestrials here on Earth right now, 7 billion strong, and they're all on the fourth dimension where you can't see them. So it's like there's a frequency, and they're on the next frequency up. So it's like when you're tuned to a radio station, the next station on the dial, you can't hear that, just the one that you're on. But um, they're waiting for the Earth to graduate a whole class to the next frequency up. So that's the meaning of the meek will inherit the earth is because um, this planet is going to become an, an 100% unselfish planet. So extraterrestrials from all over the universe have come here to be part of this. And may I add, to slant it for success. Um, so there is a battle between good and evil, and the evil extraterrestrials uh, have been told you can either turn towards light and love or leave. And of course, because they like to mess with things, they've done neither. So uh, they have to be taken care of one by one. And then you have uh, selfish people who are as bad as any selfish extraterrestrials, believe me. And I'm sure you would agree. Um, yeah, I would. <laughs> they've been told the same thing. You either have to turn to light and love or you're going to have to die. Now, that that isn't a choice for them because... Um, they're probably not going to turn to light and love. And what's going to happen is the frequency, and people say they feel this, that the, the earth frequency is uh, increasing and things are going faster. And it, it seems like, uh, you know, I remember the 1950s and 60s and I, I was just a kid and I'd be in my room and I'd think, God, this is boring. Could anything happen more slowly than this, you know? And now it's like, boy, you better be right on top of it or else things go right by you like a speeding train. Yeah, that life happens that way on this planet on a regular basis. Yeah, so uh, anyway, um, the reason why is because Planet X is about to cause pole shift. Now, that's a natural event. It's happened every 3,657 years probably going back two billion years. But about a million years ago, the Anunnaki uh, on planet X that comes through the solar system, 
they um, they spend a lot of time out in the dark of space, and they're a 29,000-mile diameter oceanic, volcanic, and atmospheric planet. And they're 8 to 12 feet tall, and they're selfish, and they're third-dimensional. If, if they have any um, flying saucers, it's because somebody loaned them one. But uh, they use rocket ships and stuff, so we've actually progressed beyond their technology now. But they were banned from coming here just before Jesus was born. And they weren't given an eviction notice. Just everything they tried to do, no matter what it was, seemed to have a failure connected to it. And they finally got the message. They go, hmm, maybe somebody doesn't want us here. And so they went back to Mars. But, of course, Planet X wasn't in the solar system 2,000 years ago. So they thought, well, let's bring some food with us. They brought goat and sheep's, sheep and um, grain and uh, hay and uh, bedding and uh, wood beams, and they built sheds for the uh, goats and the sheep. And um, they were pretty stupid because the only thing that grows on Mars is lichen. So if they had brought elk, the elk lick lichen off of rocks. That's what they do. It's not like there's a lot of food up in the Arctic Circle. So uh, if they brought elk, they'd probably still be alive. But no, they didn't. And where they went was the deepest crater on Mars, 12,000 feet deep. We have nothing like that on Earth. The deepest place below sea level that's dry land on Earth is about 200 feet, and I think it's in the Middle East near the Dead Sea. But uh, this crater is 12,000 feet deep, and if there's any oxygen on the planet and any moisture, it's down there. And, of course, that's why we sent the Curiosity rover there. So if you go look up online about the Curiosity rover, you'll see all kinds of pictures. And they look like, you know, barren crater bottom on Mars. But no, NASA sent it there because they know that's where the Anunnaki went to. And there are uh, Anunnaki dolls, Anunnaki jewelry, Anunnaki tools and equipment. There's Anunnaki skeletons. There's skeletons of uh, goats and sheep. And... Um, and then in some of these pictures, there's actually mice running around in the bottom of this crater and, believe it or not, snakes and birds. So I don't know what they did was like just took a whole barn and moved it to Mars and in there were birds and snakes and mice. But uh, it's pretty interesting to see what's in some of these pictures and communication towers. They just found a blunt uh, pyramid the other day. Um, yeah, you know, I'm seeing pictures of that on Facebook. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, clearly not uh, natural. I mean, regardless of what else you might say about it, it's not natural. So, um, and there's all kinds of domes and other, other buildings. Of course, all over Mars, there's pyramid ruins and things like that that they built. So they went to Mars first to mine gold, and then they drained all the water from the brackish they weren't very salty, but they weren't they weren't freshwater either. The brackish uh, oceans downward to sluice the gold because gold is twenty times heavier than dirt and uh, than water. So they sluiced the the uh, oceans down into hollows and caverns that are beneath the surface of Mars. And once all the water drained away, they couldn't sluice any more gold again, and um, and also the atmosphere changed. So that's when they said, and that this might be. Uh, well, we know that they came to Earth a million years ago, so uh, they who knows how long they were on Mars before that. Right. But anyway, uh, if you read the uh, Sumerian records, they came here about a million years ago, and they mined gold for 600,000 years before everybody got really tired of it and said, why don't we make some uh, human slaves who are good at gold mining but not much else? And that's when they designed us. So that's the whole history of uh, how things got to be this way. But if you look back every 3,657 years, the last time was when the Jews left Egypt, or some want me to say the Hebrews left Egypt. And then um, the time before that was the flood of Noah, and the time before that was the sinking of Atlantis. And we don't, and those are only like myths, you know. People go, well, that's just a myth, that's just a story. There seems to be a lot of evidence for uh, Noah and um, Atlantis, but. Uh, there's no absolute proof of it. And and before that, you can imagine if they've been here a million years, uh, how many times there's been pole shift every 3,657 years and how many things changed during that time. So um, and they built things like the pyramids and all kinds of things like people say, well, what are the Nazca lines? Well, you can only see them from space. 
You can't see them on the ground. You don't know what the hell they are on the ground. In fact, it's a miracle they laid them out at all because they go over ridges and, you know, it would have taken a lot of manpower to lay out those absolutely straight lines for 10 miles and scratch into the surface of Nazca. So there's all kinds of evidence of that. But um, the symbol for Planet X is the winged globe. And that's because it has a twin-stranded tail of moons that are not only rotating themselves, but they're swirling around. And they make little vortexes in the tails, um, the twin tails, uh, like uh, tornadoes and, and uh, like... Uh, the eye of the hurricane. Inside the the funnel, it, it's clear. And then the rest of the tail is all red iron oxide dust. Well, Planet X has, um, May 22nd, a picture was taken in Italy showing um, Planet X next to the sun. Now, that's nearly impossible. Nobody really gets a picture of Planet X because it's like trying to take a picture of the new moon next to the sun. The sun lights the other side of it. Eclipse. So you're looking at the dark side, so you don't see anything. So, so what, was this picture you're referring to, is that the proof that Planet X is near? No, nearer. It's always been near. I myself have taken pictures of two suns at sunset. and uh, But I'll tell you where to, you go to find this picture. It's on poleshift.ning.com. Now, Ning is a business. Like, for instance, Royce, you could start a, a Royce Holloman Club, and call it the Royce Holloman Ning.com and send people there. And you have to pay them a fee, but then you can have members and uh, and uh, all kinds of things you can do. Groups, with photo section, video section, music. Yeah, all that, yeah. So, you, <clears throat> so um, one of the one of the people who has always been involved with Zeta Talk is uh, Gerard, and Gerard started poleshift.ning.com. Well, if you go there, there's a post your Planet X picture here section. And they're the most incredible uh, pictures taken. This one picture taken by this guy, Alberto, in Italy, it turns out that the sun was hitting the tail of Planet X, all that bright iron oxide dust, and and reflected back on the backside of Planet X. And it's bigger than it's ever been. In other words, it's moving very slowly closer to Earth. Now, the reason why it doesn't just hit us and collide, why it hasn't been moving, because it came around the sun in 2003, is because gravity pushes. So it's it stopped, and Venus, the dark twin of Earth, and Earth stopped. Now, uh, Planet X is going clockwise in the plane of the, um, the um, planets around the sun, and uh, Venus... The dark twin of Earth and Earth are going counterclockwise. So those three planets are each 7,500 miles in diameter. So I don't know if people realize that Venus is basically the same size as Earth. So if you're if you're on Venus, Earth looks about the same size, only it looks blue. So um, they stopped, and it's like it's like Planet X is trying to escape. And it try, tr keeps trying to move forward, and then P Venus and the dark twin of Earth and Earth try and move forward, and they each push against each other, and they've been blocked in. So it's – I've said this before. It's like trying to catch a dog that's in the corner of a house. The dog goes to the left. You go to the left. The dog darts to the right. You go to the right. The dog darts to the left. You go to the left. And then an hour, two hours, three hours later, you still haven't caught the dog. So this is the same kind of thing. Each planet's trying to get a clear path to go away, but it's got these other planets in its way pushing back. So, so they're 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 stopped primarily because their gravity is stopping each other. Yeah, they're pushing against each other exactly. Exactly. So uh that's what this this uh delay has been because when Planet X came around the sun in 2003, people asked Nancy Leader of Zeta Talk, and she's in contact with the unselfish human Zetas, the, the little greys, the good ones, though. There are bad ones, and they're the ones who made the deal with the government. So just because you say grey, that doesn't mean all greys are bad or all greys are good. There's some good ones and some bad ones. So um, she she's in touch with the good ones, and they told her, because they're not going to give the exact date of pole shift, because I'll tell you what, there's evil people who are spraying the chemtrails, and they would just put bio-warfare chemicals in the planes and kill us all off, all of us useless eaters. And they would do that right before pole shift because then the, the um, 
government would collapse and there would be no criminal justice system and nobody would bring them to account. So that's what they're looking for. If they knew the date, that's what they would do. So uh, they're not to be told the date. So anybody who does know the date uh, won't say, and I don't know anybody who knows the date. N Nancy Leader says she has such a big mouth that if she if she knew the date, she'd probably blab it out, and that would be that. It'd be it'd be out. So they don't tell her either. But anyway, so this has been going on since uh, December of 2003, and the truth is, just like Nancy was told, pole shift could happen at any time because the minute Planet X gets to move, it's gonna it's gonna pull the crust of the Earth over the core and then let go of it. And the way it's gonna do that is there's a big mid-Atlantic ridge going down the middle of the Atlantic from Iceland to Antarctica, and there's it's got a big crack in it, and there's a huge upwelling of iron-rich magma. And although when you go across the Atlantic and you look down, you're not going to see the tops of the mountains, actually right in the middle of the Atlantic, all the way from north to south, there's a huge mountain range that almost comes to the surface, but not quite. And that's the iron bar. So Planet X is 30 million miles away, laying on its side, with its north pole pointed at our equator. So it's like 23 times the mass of Earth and 23 times the magnetic field because that's all a huge iron core uh, on planet X. And it's a giant, giant magnet. So as, as the sun rises, because remember, it's next to the sun. It's at the 4 o'clock position. So if you go out, and I recommend everybody do this, don't look through your camera. Just point the camera at the sun, take a picture, and look at it. And if there's different settings, choose which setting gets the best picture. But once you get a picture of the sun, because sometimes some cameras will just give you a picture of white, and you'll go, well, the sun must be in there, but who knows where. But sometimes they have uh, different settings on the camera. Try the different settings. But anyway, once you look at that picture, you can show it to anybody and say, does that look normal? And they'll say no. Because first of all, the sun looks ragged. And the reason why it's not a clean disk is because you're looking through the tail of Planet X uh, at the sun. Second of all, there are these white circles in your picture. Those are the moon swirls. It's like when you when you put some stuff in a blender and you turn it on high speed and you can look all the way down to the bottom where the blades are. And you can see that's like a tornado, the funnel of a tornado. And that acts like a fiber optic lens. So at some point, these these moons that are ro rot not, not rotating on themselves, but actually swirling around, uh, making um, a vortex, making a tornado funnel, the air in the middle of that is clear. So it acts like a fiber optic cable. If one end of the funnel points towards the sun, it picks up sunlight and it sh aims it towards the Earth. So people are taking pictures of the sun and getting these strange white circles. Sometimes you can get five, six, seven, eight, even ten circles in one picture. And those are not lens flares. Now, for those of you who are skeptic, you can take your camera, put it on video, and rotate it. It's kind of hard to do that in your hand. You might have to use both hands, but you rotate the camera while you're shooting a video. If it's a lens flare, the lens flare will will move, um, will stay off to the side. But if it's if it's actually in the picture, it will rotate, and that's how you can tell the difference between what's really up there and what's a flare. And usually a flare also shows various elements. Like if your lens has five elements, then there'll be five little lens circles on the picture. But uh, no, so this is a real thing. Well, for the first time ever, Royce, uh, Planet X has come close enough that the tail of Planet X will be above the horizon before sunrise. And you'll look east and you'll see these red clouds and you'll think, well, that's the red clouds before sunset. No, those are in space. Those are millions of miles away. And um, the the Earth is like a static electricity. So the tail gets attracted to Earth and it ripples back and forth across the sky. And um, the tail can even be 90 degrees, in other words, overhead while the sun is just rising. So people are getting pictures and seeing this and they're thinking, oh, that's just the red sky before dawn. Or at sunset after the sun goes down, they see red clouds in the sky and they go, that's just the sun lighting up the clouds. But I'm talking about 
if you're somewhere where there are no clouds, crystal clear, and you're looking and you see those, those are out in space, and those are the tail of Planet X. How do you tell the difference between uh, sunset, sunrise, and these uh, tails? Well, because if the sky is clear, like right now today, I've got a crystal clear blue sky. If I saw uh, at sunset, if I saw a huge red cloud above the the west, I would know it's not from the weather. It's not. It's not. You know, it's a clear day. You know, they don't spray chemtrails here like they do in a lot of places. I guess they figure people in Maine are too stupid to rec- know what they're looking at anyway. I I don't know, but um, why they they use for a while they were doing chemtrails in Maine. But I know like people tell me they spray chemtrails in Phoenix and out west all the time, all the cities. Okay. You know, they never, they never get a crystal clear day, but I do. And when I'm when when there's no cloud in the sky and I'm looking at clouds that are glowing pink, that's the tail of Planet X. And it's so close. The tail is 10 million miles long. So if Planet X is 30 million miles away and the tail is 10 million miles long, stretching into the sky above. So as the sun rises, you've got these clouds. Well, uh, the interesting thing is for the first time ever. Now, there are a lot of sign of the 10 plagues, you know, of Egypt when. When pole shift happened, there was the hail. First, the hail took the fruit off the trees. Then it took the leaves off the trees. Then it took the grain off the stalks. Then the iron oxide got into the Nile River and poisoned it, so it was like sucking on a metal bar. And uh, and then the methane release, that's what Passover is all about, why the oldest firstborn son all died is because they slept on cots near the front door. And um, the Jews were told, close the door that night. Um, so they did, and they they got they survived. But that night, all the firstborn of Egypt died from methane. So um, there's a lot going on that's happened before. But this, what I'm about to tell you, has never happened before. Out in um, the Mississippi River, where it crosses into Davenport, Iowa, I think it's I-74. There's a TV station called Quad, W Q A D dash TV dash eight. Quad Cities TV 8, Channel 8. And they do the weather every morning. And there's a bridge that goes over the Mississippi. And they have a, a cam up on the bridge pointed down at the bridge. And they'll show the, the flow of traffic and say, traffic on the I-74 bridge is moving smooth, you know. So anyway, they switch to it. And all of a sudden, there's this bright circle of light. Now, this is right at sunrise. The sun is just peeking over the eastern horizon. And this is on the Mississippi River, where it crosses into Davenport, Iowa. And all of a sudden, this white circle shows up, a bright illumination, and it moves across the Mississippi River up onto the bridge. And it lights up the cars and the roadway, and then it goes up the bridgeways, and then it goes off the bridge back into the Mississippi, and then it disappears out of the picture. So the uh, traffic reporter goes, what in the hell is that? So everybody else chimes in. And this is this is online. You can go find Quad W Quad TV 8 and look up this video. Strange uh, anomaly, strange light on bridge. So uh, they said, well, that's... Um, that's a UFO. No, it's not. It's everything's brighter where the circle is, but it's not an object. And they said, well, the street lights causing that circle. No, the street lights are off because the sun had just risen. So uh, they said, well, it's, um, you know, they were saying all these different things and they just couldn't figure it out. Well, of course they couldn't. What it was, was that one of these moon swirl funnels was pointing back at the sun And picked up sunlight and actually channeled it like a beam of light. Now, during the day, that wouldn't be bright enough to show up. Like if you were up in an airplane looking down, you wouldn't see this during the midday. But at sunrise, when the ground is still dark, this circle showed up prominently. Well, that has never been reported in any encyclopedia, history book, um, ancient scriptures, um, prophecies, nothing. Nobody has ever mentioned that before. And so the question was taken to the Zetas, and the Zetas told Nancy, and she typed it out, and that's on poleshift.ning.com also, that um, that that is a spotlight from a moon swirl of the tail of Planet X. Well, that's never happened before. That means Planet X is coming closer. But then you look at this picture taken in um, May 22nd by Alberto, and you can plainly see this blue marble next to the sun 
And that's because it's it's like a bluish purple reddish. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, so the sunlight hit the tail of Planet X, reflected back and, and illuminated the dark side of Planet X. And there have been all kinds of pictures taken starting back in 2003 with the SOHO satellite showing a ball with wings because the tails would go out to either side and it would look like a bird wheeling in the sky. And um, the ball is always small. This ball is bigger than anybody's ever seen before. So that means that we're getting closer to pole shift. So it's it's really remarkable, these pictures and this, this moon swirl spotlight on a bridge over the Mississippi. That's like big news because that's a phenomenon that nobody had ever foreseen or thought would happen. Is it's, it's like a fiber optic tunnel c c channeling light sunlight towards the Earth. And you would think, well, maybe there would be a beam of light hitting the Earth. But to actually see it from a camera up on a bridge looking down, wow. So I recommend everybody go look at that. Um, Batman never had a signal like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, and, you're talking about what the, the world uses spotlight, and it and it didn't it wasn't man made. <laughs> exactly, and this is this is I'll tell you when it was about uh, three weeks ago, maybe four, no more than four, definitely in June. Um, the spotlight on the bridge, the strange light on the bridge. So that's something that you can look up. But um, there have been a lot of quakes, 400 quakes a week in Oklahoma. That's because what the big picture here of what's about to happen is that the northern tip of South America is about to move 400 miles west into the Pacific. In other words, the Pacific is going to become narrower and the Atlantic is going to become wider. So the, the northern tip of South America is trying to move west. Well, it can't very easily because the southern tip is firmly attached to the Antarctic plate. So it's locked. And the only way it's going to be the northern end of South America is going to be able to move is if there's a crack develops. Well, there's a big volcano that went off in Chile about a month ago. To the east of that volcano is where the crack is going to develop. And so the bottom half, the little dagger at the bottom of South America, is still going to be attached to the Antarctic plate. But this crack is going to open up, and that's going to allow the northern end of South America to move west. Now, while it's trying to move west, and it's not moving, but it's trying to, it's putting pressure on Central America, which puts pressure on Mexico. So actually, the whole of Central America and Mexico is being pushed slightly westward, and that's creating a curve from Alaska to Mexico, and the center of the curve is, it's like a bow, it's like a, a, a bowing of the North American plate. The center of the bow is San Diego. Now, um, everything to the east of San Diego, in order for this, this crack to develop, for the South America to move west, it's got to smash Central America and disconnect from the Caribbean plate. So you wouldn't realize it, but the Caribbean plate attaches to the northern side of South America. So if South America starts moving west, the support for the Caribbean plate is going to drop, and that's going to start sinking all the Caribbean islands. Either then, that or they can move closer into the Gulf. Well, um, there won't be any new islands coming up. The ones that are there will be sinking. They'll, be, they'll start sinking from the south. Then Central America will, will get crushed, and uh, then um, uh, the pressure will finally be taken off of, of Mexico because with Central America crushed, how is any pressure going to go from South America to Mexico? It's not. But in the process, what it's doing is opening up all these fissures to the east of San Diego. Well, wouldn't you know it, the European Space Agency has a, a spectroscopic satellite and they can examine different molecules that are in the atmosphere. So they're going around filming the Earth, and they filmed uh, North America with their spectroscope. And, oh, my God, you're not going to believe what they found. Two gigantic plumes of methane, gigantic. One is coming up from the Salton Sea, which is east of San Diego. And the other one is coming up from the four corners, like Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Right there, that's called the four corners. And there's a lot of coal there. And they ship, uh, they crush it, and they ship it with water and pipelines to Los Angeles to power California's electric needs. Anyway, the spectroscope caught this gigantic methane plume 
the likes of which nobody had ever imagined. And it's not like there's like an opening in the earth, like there's a, like a volcano, but the amount of methane is like a super volcano. It's huge. I mean, this is big and, um, and it's spectacular. If it was a volcano, it would be the biggest volcano in the United States. But it's not. It's a methane release that's continuous because as the um, as Mexico gets pushed a little bit to the west and uh, it opens up a crack east of San Diego that goes through Texas to Oklahoma and it continues east. But the whole North Atlantic plate is trying to move. It's stretching. So what's going to happen is the St. Lawrence Seaway is going to rip wider. It's going to continue right across the Great Lakes um, over to Omaha, Nebraska. Edgar Casey said the, the greatest seaport 100 years from now, the greatest seaport in North America will be Omaha, Nebraska. So get your saltwater fishing gear and move to Omaha. So so where's that going to leave uh, Houston, Texas? Is it going to go underwater? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're in a bad place. Um you're going to have to be at least uh, 800 feet above sea level, are you? I doubt it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, anyway, all this stretching. And actually, they just had a quake the other day that went from Canada around the Great Lakes at a diagonal all the way down to Virginia, and they didn't even know about that fault. And um, so, anyway... Uh, have you heard of uh, Operation Jade Helm? I think everybody's heard of Operation Jade Helm. Well, see, most people think it's like preparation for urban warfare and preparation for declaring martial law, but it's not that simple. Is that what you think it is? I had serious doubts of that. They've been doing these kind of, uh, you know, runs for many, many years without it going to that. And let's face it, if they were to uh, stage something like that, the South is the worst place to do it to begin with. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, everybody's got guns and will use it. It'd be easier to pull it off in the north. <laughs> right. Well, they're fully armed in the north too. I got to tell you. Not like we are. I don't. At least well, not by reputation. <laughs> I think. I think Maine is. Everybody has a gun in Maine. Anyway, uh, so Nancy took a question. Now I'm talking about Nancy Leader, and she has this website, ZetaTalk.com, and that's where you go. And the, one of the top sections there is safe areas. And it's got the whole world listed. So you can go to your country, usually your city, and you can see what the future is. And then it tells you where a safe areas are near that that you can go to. So that's what you got to do is make plans. So, uh, and, and, you know, even if you don't want to, Royce, then uh, the listeners, you know, if you're in Texas on the coast, it's not good. Okay, not Well, good. I'm about 60 miles in from the coast. Yeah, well, uh, how far in would a 600-foot tidal wave reach? I have no idea. Yeah. I hope not 60 miles. You're right. So um, somebody asked the Zetas about Project Jade Helm, and they said, the United States Geological Survey told the U.S. government that the New Madrid Fault is going to go off between July 15th and September 15th, and that's going to trigger the San Andreas Fault. Did you go see that movie that just came out? Mm, which one? San Andreas. Oh, no, I haven't. It's spectacular, let me tell you. I wouldn't, I'd never go see them in 3D, and they're expensive enough without 3D. I think it was $9 a ticket. Boy. But it's action packed, and the, and the graphics of the uh, ripping of the San Andreas Fault from Southern California to Northern California are spectacular. I mean, anybody that wants to live in a city after they see that, um, you know, they're, they're just giving up. So, anyway, the U.S. Geological Survey told the government, so what they did was they planned this so-called exercise to move troops into 11 western states, including South Carolina, Florida, and all the states in between Florida and Texas. So, what is that all about? Well, what it's about is, if the New Madrid Fault goes off, and then it triggers the San Andreas Fault, you're talking possibly... And I'm not even talking about how many dead people. I'm just talking about homeless. 30 to 50 million. 30 to 50 million homeless. Now, when when this Caribbean plate starts sinking, Florida is going to sink. And actually, Miami is going to be 150 feet lower under the ocean than it is now. And then you talk about a final sea level of 700 feet. You're talking about Florida being under 850 feet of salt water permanently. 
So do you think, Royce, that if you lived in North Carolina, you'd be happy to see everyone from South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia walk north onto your farm? Not in particular. It would be a certain crowding issue going on, but they'd have to go somewhere. <laughs> well, that's the point. So that's what the special forces are for, is to see what needs to be done. Now, it's possible that the quakes will take out every single bridge in the whole area from South Carolina to Southern California. And uh, how are these people going to move and what are they going to do? That's why they've been closing Walmarts and turning them into FEMA centers. Now, they rented them from Walmart till October, and they guaranteed to pay Walmart every penny they would have made had they stayed open. So really, Walmart should just build some more super centers and let the let FEMA take them over. So but they're the, just being leased out until this is over. They took everything out of Walmart and they put all kinds of FEMA stuff in there for uh, – and I heard – now, I, I haven't gotten anybody to confirm this, but somebody said that there was a big ad for um, strong people, healthy people to – work for the Army Corps of Engineers to assist the engineers. They would be living in living and working in harsh environments in disaster scenarios. So, And it didn't say how many people they were looking to hire. So, I would hope for that they'd pay a top dollar. Well, I have a friend who's uh, actually, I didn't even know there were such people. He's an Army Corps of Engineers certified inspector. So once the Army Corps of Engineers does something, he's... He's certified to go inspect it and make a report on what they did, whether it was good or bad. He said he was going to look into it and then call me, and he never called me, so I don't think he found it. It might have been a hoax. There's, there's been a lot of hoaxes and misinterpretation mis, um, of all this stuff. But anyway, as you can see, the whole Pacific Rim of Fire is coming alive. Um, volcanoes are erupting uh, all over the place. And um, the reason why is because the Earth wobble. Now, what Planet X does, it's sitting out there 30 million miles away, just not moving at all or moving very slowly, like an inch a day or a foot a day, maybe even a mile a day. I don't know, but very slowly. And its North Pole is pointed at our equator just like a flashlight. Well, normally, North Poles repel each other. So when the North Pole of Planet X points at the Earth, that should push the North Pole of Earth further from the sun. But what's happened is that that iron bar in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, as the sun rises over the Atlantic, the North Pole of Planet X grabs it and pulls the North Atlantic down towards the sun. So the sun is sitting over the North Atlantic during the day, which is, you know, totally unheard of. And then as the Earth turns and, and, the, nor and the, the bar gets out of the way, all of a sudden the normal reaction of the North Pole of Planet X and the North Pole of Earth takes over and they repel each other. And that pushes the North Pole further away from the sun. So during the day in the Pacific, the sun is sitting over the South Pacific south of the equator. Now, let me put this into perspective. Last year in the Atlantic Ocean, we had one hurricane which did nothing. They, it was enough of a hurricane to name it, and that's all that happened. In the Pacific last year, they had 81 hurricanes. They call them typhoons and cyclones. 81. So 81 to 1. Now, that has never happened before in the history of Earth, that there were one hurricane in the Atlantic and 81 in the Pacific. The reason why is when it pulls the North Atlantic ice land down towards the sun, and it sits over the North Atlantic, there's no amount of heating from the sun that's going to cause a hurricane in the North Atlantic. It's just never going to happen. But when it's sitting below the equator, uh, just heating up the already hot water off Indonesia, the Philippines, um, Japan, China, um, Malaysia, um, and India, um, it's creating incredible heat waves, and it's heating the ocean waters like never before. So the storms that are coming, that are forming and coming ashore in the Pacific and the Indian Ocean are ferocious. They're gigantic. And I'll give you an example of, um, of uh, how you can tell. This happens every single day. So as soon as the sun rises over the Atlantic, the North Pole bends down towards the sun. Well, I can go out. Now, I live in Maine. I'm 44 degrees north. 
I can go out in midday and, and the sun, my shadow is just covering my shoes. My shadow is not three feet behind me or 10 feet behind me. It's just barely covering my shoes. And that's because the sun is directly overhead during the day. Well, people don't know anything. You know that, Royce. Nobody knows nothing. I, I see these these TV shows where they show a pres- picture of the president and they say, who's that? And people go, I don't know. Well, everybody knows what they're taught in church pretty much, and that's about it. Well, and Common Core didn't do any uh, favors to anybody with this dumbing everybody down since the mid-60s. Mm. So people people just don't know. So they're not, they wouldn't know what's happening. So um, when I go outside in the early morning, I see us moving south. So let's say there's a big cloud front down off of New York and New Jersey, and it's crystal clear here in Maine. At dawn, we just speed south as the north pole of the Earth gets pulled down towards the sun, and the sun is now over the North Atlantic. Um, My shadow barely covers my shoes. And then, so we go right into the weather. So it might have been crystal clear at 3 a.m. At 8 a.m., it's cloudy because we've gone down into... uh, into all this pollution that goes from west to east across the uh, United States and the uh, weather and the humidity and everything else. Then as soon as the sun sets on the Atlantic, you can just sit outside and we we speed north. Now, I'll give you an example from the other day. We had a southerly wind off the ocean coming up onto this mountaintop, and we're two miles from the Gulf of Maine, so we're two, two miles from the Atlantic Ocean. The wind was coming from the south. As soon as the sun started to set, we started going north, and I was looking at all these clouds in the sky, and they were do- going directly north to south. Well, were the clouds moving? No. When the Earth wobbles, the air stays behind. You know, it it doesn't. It's not attached to the Earth. So if the Earth wobbles, the clouds, um, you know. So we move back under the northerly sky, which was clear with very few clouds. But you could see flags blowing from a south wind at the same time that you could look up and see all the high clouds coming from the north to the south. In other words, we were moving north. Now, I've heard, I've talked to people in North Dakota who have had uh, rain all day, and then as the sun sets, uh, all the rain heads due south. They just watch it disappear right down to South Dakota. But if people don't notice this stuff, now, you can go to the Naval Observatory, or there, or there are lots of calendars that tell you when the sun rises and when the sun sets. Well, I was supposed to have sunrise at, at uh, 5.10. Well, at 4.40, the sun rose. I'm sitting there thinking, well, sunrise is going to be in half an hour. No, the, I had shafts of sunlight coming through the window, hitting me in the face uh, 30 minutes early. So, But see, if you don't know when what's supposed to happen and when, then you have no way of telling um, you know, if something's wrong or if something's funny. But if you start looking into this yourself, go take pictures of the sun. Go watch when sunrise is. Go watch where your sunset is. I've seen the sunset almost due north. Well, yes, it's the solstice. Yes, the sun sets in its most northerly position, but not that far north. You know, so it's it's really interesting. I don't know if you noticed any of that or have you had any people on any shows talking about things being different? Not yet, and I don't go outside off myself. Hmm. Well, because for those of my of you, condition. Yeah, the condition your condition is in. Yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel the same way. I went to the doctors for one procedure, and they knocked me out. It's supposed to be for two hours, and I woke up four and a half hours later, and I, I have trouble with my hips. And I felt they had thrown me down a flight of stairs, and they've set me back so completely. Gordon, we can't hear you all of a sudden. I think there may be a lost connection. Completely oh, that I could oh, barely uh, lay on my. I could barely. Lay, we got it. Yeah, I might have had some and and for a while. So, uh, well, I don't know what we can do about it. Um, you could call me back. It seems like I have silver bars, so I'm not sure why. Well, let's just keep trying and see what happens. Yeah. So I felt like the doctors, while I was uh, unconscious, threw me down a flight of stairs, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we turned you over using your legs." I go, "Well, you should never have done that because my hips hurt," you know. I might end up needing a double hip replacement. So they it's really uh, I'm not I'm not that happy with doctors. The doctors are very nice, but if they're incompetent, who cares? Yeah, I've had some bad run in with doctors myself. So that sounded like your Skype's starting. 
Yeah, I, yeah, I got uh, it's people coming on and off. I guess I don't know. That may explain what happened to you a minute ago. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, that's what the special forces are. Now, the special forces, you think, well, it's going to be between July and September. The Zetas said that the government has been sending special forces uh, secretly six months ago to move into local areas. So if you see a guy who looks like he should be in the special forces, but he's renting an apartment from you in Texas, that's special undercover special forces. And they're joining all the groups, the militia groups and the uh, skinheads and the Aryan supremacists. And they're getting ready because they figure that when the Caribbean plate sinks and immigration starts by boat from the Caribbean, and people are just disasters in Central America. People are going to walk north, and there's going to be the hugest crowd of people crossing the southern borders from Florida by boat all the way over to uh, Texas, and then starting in Texas to California by land walking. There's going to be huge immigration. Well, Obama has no intention of stopping that. This will be a human wave of survivors, and he has no intention of stopping that. So they have planned, the special forces have planned that Texas will want to secede from the United States. And uh, you live in Texas. Uh, I think they're, if the, anybody's going to want to secede from the United States, it's going to be Texas, right? Most likely. They have talked about it before, you know, right? when they, The last time they did that bailout, Texas talked about it. So now the Texas legislature just passed a bill to build a new gold bullion depository. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. Yeah. So they say, the governor of Texas says that the Federal Reserve in New York has $1 billion worth of gold that is actually owned by Texas. And they're going to build this repository and then they're going to move the gold from New York to Texas. Now, to me, that's in preparation for a succession, wouldn't you say? It sounds like a very good possibility. Of course, a billion dollars isn't isn't as much as you would think. I mean, you and I would like a billion dollars, but... They wouldn't do anything to help start a new state. <laughs> for a whole state, that isn't much. And, of course, the question is, is there any gold left? Because we know that the Bush and Clintons emptied out Fort Knox. And they put uh, tungsten bars, gold, gold-coated tungsten bars back in there to make it seem like the gold was still there. Well, tungsten is a lot cheaper than gold, and it weighs the same. You would need a, a, a scale that's accurate to ten thousandths of an ounce to, to know the difference. And so China asked for a lot of gold uh, as repayment on its loan. And I think you might have heard this in the news about a year ago. We shipped. Uh oh, we lost them again, at least for a minute. Where he's at, he sometimes gets a poor internet. A lot of gold to China as a payment. Is it, can you hear me yet again? Yeah. Well, we shipped, we shipped a lot of gold to China, and they drilled into it, and it turned out it was tungsten bars. Boy, were they upset. <laughs> I bet they were. So, now, I heard, though, that all the uh, gold from the uh, Fort Knox has uh, been missing, and they're trying to make uh, the government uh, tell us where it all went. Well, I'm telling you, I know where it went. Bush and Clinton stole it. I don't know what they did with it, but you have to ask uh, Hillary and Jeb. And George W. and George H. You got to ask them where they put it all. And, and Bill, I did not have sex with that woman. <laughs> I smoked, but I didn't inhale. Yeah, I did not inhale. So anyway, uh, it's my bad, bad imitation. But anyway, um, when the World Trade Center came down, in the basement of both Trade Center buildings were the Federal Reserve Gold Bullion Depository, and they packed up all the gold into tractor trailers, um, and the last door on the last truck closed at 6 a.m., and where it drove off to, nobody knows. Maybe it's in the basement of the Chase Manhattan Bank, because they're the Federal Reserve, but I don't know. So I don't know what's going to happen. If Texas asks for a billion dollars and it's gold back, which they're supposedly just holding, you know, if they ask for a billion dollars back, um, the question is, uh, what are they going to get? Tungsten bars? Are they going to say, here's some gold certificates? That's the same. Because they passed a federal law saying a gold certificate is the same as a gold bar. So, um, you know, people... Yeah, that, that, that's not necessarily true just because they say it is. 
Well, that's the point is where is it and, and what have they done with it, you know? But obviously, uh, Texas is going to plan to succeed. Once they see millions of Central Americans and Mexicans, maybe even South Americans, if they get a start before Central America gets crushed, um, walking across the border, they are going to want to stop that flow. And and whatever they do, whether they call out the National Guard or whether they secede from the nation, um, there's going to be special forces everywhere in Texas, and they're going to come in and arrest the governor and seize the legislature, and that'll be the end of it. Simple. But that's all That's all planned. Now, in California... Now, minute, Obama knows that Texas is planning this, and he's, there's no plans anywhere to, to put a stop to it or to discourage it? Yeah, there is. The minute they try and do it, the legislature and the state will be seized. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying now. I'm sorry, I got distracted there for a minute. Somebody in the chat room had asked for my uh, for the host email address. I had typed it in there, and I was just looking to see if there was anything else. And I caught about half of what you were saying while I was checking that out. And I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. So um, now in California, when the San Andreas Fault uh, happens, the, the damage is going to be incredible. And there's going to be looting, and there is going to be martial law declared in California. You can count on it. And you're going to want martial law. The whole question is that Obama is supposed to announce, and I've mentioned this before, he's supposed to announce the presence of a rogue planet in the solar system. Then I think he's going to say, uh, just, oh, we'll come back. Um, Gordon, hey, do this to you, but you can hear break time starting. Hold that thought. We'll try to remember to take up where we left off at when we come back from break. Good. Hi, Royce. This is Hello, Gordon. Gordon. Are you? Did you remember your place where we can take back up where you left off at? Uh, I think so. I don't know. Tell me what I left off on. Well, that's just it. And why I'm asking you why you remember because I had forgotten <laughs> before I ever asked you. Uh, well, I was I was about to say that uh, that the way it looks now, Royce, is that by Christmas everything as we know it now will be different. And that includes the uh, crashing of the economy. And um, I know there are a lot of people that have lots of different reasons for saying the economy is about to crash. But you can bet if 30 to 50 million people are homeless, thousands are dead, California is destroyed, and the, and the middle of the country in the New Madrid, Missouri area is destroyed, you can imagine what that's going to do to the economy. Well, the economy is already being pretty well destroyed and everything's moving to the... Uh Reach 1% and going away from the middle class and the poor class. Yeah, well, they already took it away from me, I'll tell you that. You were part of the middle class, weren't you? I, th I thought I was. Not anymore? <laughs> no. No, I'm on, like, bare bones uh, Social Security. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if they could give me less, you know. Better hope not, because I guarantee you one thing. They're making it illegal to feed the homeless now. Oh. That's Many states are anyway, not all of them yet. Oh, uh, it's like feeding pigeons in the park, don't do it, just don't, just say no? Something like that, yeah. Mm. Well, you see, the, the whole thing is going to be how the president, um, you know, announces it. Now, if he says, uh, there's a rogue planet, it's going to destroy everything, we're declaring martial law, and uh, you can't leave your house without permission, and uh, you can't withdraw any money from bank accounts, and basically you're screwed, then I think everyone would get their gun and go to town. But if he says, if this is something that we've known about since 1983, it was top secret until I re issued an executive order allowing me to talk to it, talk about it, and Planet X comes through the solar system and it's going to cause pole shift and uh, millions of people along the coast are going to die. But we have a plan. We're going to move everybody inland to a safe area. If people work together, we can get through this together. This is not an enemy like another country. This is not an enemy like a political system that you don't agree with. This is not um, an enemy from space. This is a natural event. And all, every time it happens, all record keeping goes to hell. So there's actually no record of it. There's the story of the sinking of Atlantis, the flood of Noah, and the uh, plagues of Egypt when the uh, Hebrews went to find the promised land. But those are the last three times we know of, and uh, even the record-keeping of that is pretty sketchy. So if people work together, if you take people into your home, um, 
You know, in the old days in the revolution, uh, in the American Revolution, people would bundle in bed. Well, they had awful heating systems. So maybe if you get 10 people in the same bed, then everyone would keep warm. Um, so, but see, the thing is, is how the president announces it, it's going to be critical. Because if he says the, the enemy is how we, we work together or we don't work together. So if we can work together to get through this, then it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Then everyone, if he, if he makes an, an announcement like that, which could happen at any time now, because don't you think that they've been waiting until the last minute to tell you? I mean, they're not going to tell you two years in advance and have everybody uh, move to Montana and North Dakota. Um, you know, and then Jordan, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I thought you'd like to know you got a caller calling in. Oh, well, let's take a question then. Caller, you're on the air. Oh, thank you. You can hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm not sure where you're, if you're uh, a little bit ahead. I was just listening on the Internet. I'm, I'm not sure if you're a little ahead of, now. Of where no, I'm, we're ready uh, to take a question. What's your first name? Hey, it's, it's Jim. Jim, and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Utah. Okay, great. What, what's your question, yeah. sir? Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Uh, you know, I, I'm i sure you probably heard about this Project Bluebeam uh, technology. Um, I'm, and yeah. I, you know, I know th and how they can, uh, you know, create uh, illusions and things with that. Uh, right. Hologram. I'm, I'm just wondering. Hologram, yeah. You know, I don't know how much that, I was wondering, you know, how, what, how much of a possibility that is, is you know, related to something like Planet X or some kind of space uh you know threat that if they could like fabricate like like they could make it would something like planet x be too big of a a thing to fake i mean like like have like look look at have it look like there's this space body coming in and then and then with their their weather manipulation stuff make it seem like there's this there's all these disasters happening because of a space object no yeah. that's no, I can tell you right now, you can uh, rest easily at night. There's none of that is true. First of all, they're not going to have Project Blue Beam for one major reason. There are 7 billion extraterrestrials here right now, and all of them are unselfish, and they will not allow um, the uh, public to be fooled like that. And I myself, I have a radio show on Revolution Radio, Friday nights at midnight till 2 in the morning, and I started two weeks ago issuing a call to the Council of Worlds. Now, if enough people make this call, then um, then they will do it. In other words, they cannot interfere with the free will of anybody on Earth. And believe it or not, the skeptics and the doubters have free will. And they want to be doubtful and skeptical, and they don't want to believe in extraterrestrials. But now that 50% of the world believes in extraterrestrials, I've been issuing a call. And what that is, is I tell people to repeat after me. I call upon the Council of Worlds. I call upon the Council of Worlds to remove the element of doubt, to remove the element of doubt. Now, what that is, is I had a dream of waking vision in 1988 of pole shift. And in my vision, I could see flying saucers stationed about a mile apart like polka dots in the sky all over the whole surface of the earth and that's a it's a two-pronged disclosure because if if the president announces planet x and people go look it up the very top on the google search is going to be zeta talk and you go to zeta talk and you find out that for 20 years unselfish ets have been taking questions from the public and and answering them and this woman in wisconsin um, who lives in a small farmhouse with no money has been typing the answers for 20 years nancy leader that that um giving information on the safe areas what's going to happen when it's going to happen and they've been right time after time after time about what's going to happen and what, when you're going to see what now they say when you look up at the sun without any special glasses and just to the right of it, you can see Planet X standing separate. At that point, when the whole world looks up and goes, oh, my God, what's that? Then you have 49 days until pole shift. So I also want to say that the Air Force used to have on their website, we own the, the weather. Now they have on their website, 
We plan to own the weather starting in 2025. And let me just say that if you use HARP to control the weather, you would have to build every square inch of Alaska with nuclear reactors for enough power to do that. So no, HARP, HARP is not causing this. What's causing it is earth wobble with this huge uh, loop in the jet stream. Now, normally the jet stream moves west to east in the northern hemisphere and east to west in the southern hemisphere. And if you see these gigantic loops, it's because this earth wobble is happening every day. So there will be no, they don't have enough holographic projectors to do anything and they don't need to. They, they, they've spent hundreds of trillions of dollars on tunnels, which are all going to be useless. They've spent it on putting supplies away in Kokomo, Indiana and Denver for the carry on government. And let me tell you what the Bilderberg, Bilderberg just has a meeting every year, usually at some exclusive hotel that they can blockade in Europe. And uh, they just had a meeting, and my wife was reading to me the agenda of the Bilderbergs. And I said, Janet, stop reading that to me. There's, there's, uh, the agenda is Planet X, Planet X, Planet X, Planet X, Planet X, and Pole Shift. And that's the agenda. So somebody asked Nancy Leader, uh, what is the agenda of the Bilderberg? What are the secret discussions in the Bilderberg meeting? I think that was last week. Uh, what are they discussing? And you're not going to believe the nerve of these selfish billionaires, what they were discussing. They said in their private meetings, the economy is going to collapse. So how can we keep all the workers showing up at the factories to keep us wealthy? So what are we going to offer them? And they came up with the idea that they would give them food like I don't know what job you have, but let's say, Jim, that you work at a factory. Would you show up at the factory if they said, we're not going to pay you cash anymore? We're going to give you bread and cheese? No. I mean, these people, these people just don't get it. You know, they're thinking, we're going to build spaceships and leave the Earth and come back as kings of the Earth after pole shift. But guess what? Every spaceship they've tried to launch has blown up. Everything that involves them leaving the Earth and they and the unselfish extraterrestrials have said, Earth is a school. We're about to graduate a class. Nobody, and, and no matter how wealthy or powerful they are, are cutting class. So these people should just give all their money away to everybody, roll up their sleeves, and plant a garden because it's going to be survival communities. Money is going to be worthless. If you put away money into gold bars, that's going to be worthless. And you're in Utah. I mean, you have the Mormon church. The Mormon church has known... For decades, this was going to happen, and they've issued orders that everybody should have, what, a year's worth of supplies put away? I mean, you must know some Normans, or maybe you're one of them. Yeah, I, I grew up in it. I'm, I'm not I'm not involved in it now, but, but yeah, it's always been important to have food storage, and, uh, uh, you know, I know that they have their underground bunkers here, too, so. Yeah, um, and you see, you when know. you get a 9 or 10 earthquake, uh, how good are those underground bunkers going to be? Yeah, I mean, maybe they think that they're reinforced to take it, but I, yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> probably questionable. Yeah. Well, what, one other question: what sure. What's your take on this? I mean, I have a feeling what you're, where you're gonna, what you're gonna, your response is gonna be. But what do you think? There's any credibility at all of this flat, flat Earth theory? Because it seems there's a, a lot no. of it really makes a lot of it really makes sense. Well, of course, to me, you know what I've looked at. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I'm interested in the hollow earth theory too and the flat earth theory, but there, I'll tell you what, there's a whole bunch of branch of the CIA that does nothing more than pay people to muddy the waters. So you get, you're the average person, you know nothing, all you do is read the newspaper, you never ask the big question, what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? What's really going on? So you don't, all you know is what the media tells you. And then you hear these theories and they're meant to confuse you. So you're thinking, right. you're thinking, well, if you see a flying saucer, it's got to be selfish ET is going to kill me or something. No, you know what? Or just the government or just the government, you know? Yeah, the, go the government the government is trying to muddy the waters. That's why they're spraying chemtrails. They don't want you to look up and see the, the planet X next to the sun. And they don't want you to figure out what's happening. And they don't want you to tell other people that you've figured it out. They want you to keep quiet. And they want you to keep paying your mortgage payment and your car payment. You keep showing up at work. When really you ought to be saying to your family and your friends, 
listen, we have to head for the hills and we have to find a place where we can grow our own food because all the stores are going to, the, the bridges are going to be out. There's no, the refineries are going to be sunk. I mean, Texas is the refining center of this country. The refineries are going to be out. Um, where are we going to get fuel? The, elect- the grid is going to be down. How are you going to survive? And I'll tell you how you're going to survive. First of all, you're going to donate $100 to Revolution Radio. And you're gonna- <laughs> Sorry. You're going to get 35,000 non-GMO seeds, and you're going to get these survival documents, 900 of them on a DVD disc, and then you're going to learn how to can food and grow food. Some people have a natural green thumb, but when you plant seeds, it takes 60 to 120 days to get food. So what are you going to live on uh, between now and then? I tell people, go out the door one day next week, just make it convenient for you, one day next week, and don't eat anything that came from a store. Eat out of your yard for the whole day, and that will show you exactly the situation that you're in. Now, I think Utah, you you really don't have to worry about tidal waves, unless you're next to the, uh, you know, what is it called, the Salt Lake? We have a great Salt Lake here, and um, I I think There'll be you some know, we've got these, there's like these giant rivers, I guess, that are deep underground because the, the ground here is really uh, pretty sandy. So if we had a major earthquake, it could all collapse, and then we'd have major uh, water yeah, problems. Yeah, isn't that what uh, they call so, liquefy? Everything would liquefy and start sinking in the wet sand? Isn't yeah, there's huge that? aquifers underneath, uh, too, that like are like massive river things. So people who think that we're just safe from any kind of water thing here are you know, or, yeah. uh, that's interesting. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really, I, I kind of, I had read some information about a lady who, who had dreams about some, you know, predicted like a major earthquake here, you know, that would create a lot of flooding. Um, but as far as this be- becoming like, uh, a beach pro, you know, a new beach, I don't know about that, but you know, I, mean, I don't, don't know if like the pole shift would create, if there's a pole shift, that would create the the ocean coming in this far. No, I don't think you know, so. As far as the I, ocean I, goes, you know. but you're not you're not safe from quakes. And the thing is, the tail of Planet X has trillions of rocks. So after after uh, Planet X comes close enough to magnetically grab the Atlantic bar, the bar of metal in the Atlantic, and slide the crust over the North Pole of the core, and then let it go, and receive Brazil will be the new North Pole. So after it does that, it's going to continue on its way, but it's going to trail a 10 million mile twin stranded tail behind it. And those two tails, the twin stranded tail, are filled with millions of rocks. And so there will be a fall of rocks. Now, of course, when they enter the atmosphere, they get red hot. Some of them will burn up, but a lot of them will just plain get red hot and then come to Earth and go right through the roofs of buildings, um, set fire to forests. Um, and so it, for the, for the pole shift and the earthquakes before pole shift leading up to pole shift, which pole shift will only take an hour. So, but then the sloshing of the 600 foot tidal waves on all the coastlines of the world, that will take a couple of days to subside and then there'll be damage. I mean, everything will be ruined wherever 600 feet of salt water went. But then right after planet X goes by, um, then you're going to have the fall of rocks. And, of course, the Earth will start turning again. It will stop turning in order for planet to X to grab the Atlantic bar. So there will be the three days of, of light if you're on the Atlantic and three days of darkness if you'll be on the Pacific. But it, it will um, go by, and then the crust will start turning with the core again, and then this fall of rocks will come. And, and there's no predicting where any one rock is going to be. So you might be in an area that's completely free of it, and you might be in an area that's just peppered like an artillery bombardment. And at that point, your safest thing is to go back underground because there's not going to be any more earthquakes. So, But by then, your bunker might be destroyed. But that's the recommendation is that people have an underground place to go to get out of the way of the rocks. And, of course, if a rock... Yeah, I'm, I, live right, I live right by a, a mountain, you know, like the you know, the, the Wasatch range. And so mm. I wondered about, wondered about that, you know, if the, well, living by the, by the mountains, you know, <laughs> well, that, that's going to have a lot of collapses and landslides. Look at Nepal. Yeah. I mean, what a mess. 
because you already ha- you've always had quakes there, so that is an unstable area. I think it's even volcanic, isn't it? Uh, down more in southern Utah, you've got the you know uh, there's a lot of volcanic rock around there and stuff. Uh, but I'm sure that this area has been influenced too. There's you can find lava rock and stuff around here too. You know. Right. Um, so they say but, that um, volcanoes on Earth are going to erupt. So you can just imagine what that's going to be like. Yeah. 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 And the new I, and the new equator is going to go. You can take a globe and you can look at it. You just draw a line right through Alaska to through Hawaii. Hawaii is going to survive, and Alaska is going to survive. But you can imagine. Uh, once there's a new North Pole, is the eastern tip of Brazil, all the ice in the world is going to melt, and the, the, every tide, the ocean's going to every day, the ocean's going to come up one foot above where it was, until it ends up 700 feet above the present level. So the one reason for that is there's going to be a huge new continent arising between South America and Africa, and it's going to be gigantic, and that's why the English Navy has. Uh, rebuilt their base in the Falkland Islands and moved all these personnel there because after pull shift, when that continent appears above the waves, the British government, God bless them, uh, selfish idiots that they are, they're planning to seize that continent uh, for for a new new Britain, New England, new the new British Empire. Of course, the Queen knows that the whole UK is going underwater, just like Florida. They're going to sink another 150 feet. So the final sea level for the UK is 850 feet above present. And if you do a map of, uh, of the UK and you see Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England, you'll see there's hardly anything that's still – there's a, like a wilderness area called the Brecon Wilderness in Wales. There will be some peaks that are still above the water there. Um, and there'll be a few other hills and mountains here and there, but by and large, everybody right. in the UK is going to die. So the Queen has come over to uh, the United States several times, and she sent uh, her son, Prince Charles, and she sent her grandson, Prince William, to beg Obama, can the royal family please move to the United States in the hours before pole shift? And Obama said, no, we don't, we don't need a monarchy here. Sorry. We don't need a royal family here. And... Uh, their, their son, Prince Harry, bought a whole village in Romania, and they said, why did you do that? And he goes for a pole shift, and that's the only thing that the royal family has ever said about um, pole shift or Planet X or anything. But Prince Harry's planning to make his home in a whole village. And, of course, when you buy a whole village, then that means every Friday all the tenant, tenants in the village have to pay you rent. So uh, he's got plans. That man's always thinking. But the queen was going to move to her ranches in Western Australia, but the west side of Australia is going to go underwater, and the eastern side is going to rise higher than it is. We are building the biggest United States military base outside the United States in southeastern Australia because, guess what? Well, the ice in Antarctica is going to melt, and we're planning to go seize Antarctica for the United States. This, all this stuff is happening. They're like pieces to the puzzle. When you put it together, you realize, oh, my God, something really big is happening. And then people have a feeling like, I don't know if you do, but I do. There's something in the air, like something big is going to happen. I'm not sure what it is, you know, but I'm pretty sure it's what I've been telling you. I mean, I'm giving you the best information I have as soon as I get it. That's that's all I can do. And, you know, I realize a lot of it's uh, doom and gloom. But at the same time, I'm telling you what you can do to save yourself. You know, make plans, put aside tools, uh, find people who who you like, who you could live with, who you could work together. Because we might end up living for a few years like the uh, Amish or the Shakers. But then, with open contact with unselfish extraterrestrials, they're going to come and bring all kinds of electronic devices and and uh, food growing. And uh, there's a new race, a hybrid race that they're, that's invisible now because they're on the fourth dimension. But when the Earth goes to the fourth dimension, we'll be working with them. They're human and um, they're, they're just like us. And they're going to be farming and gardening, except they'll be, we'll all be telepathic and we'll be in touch with each other. So anything you want to know, you'll be able to ask the person who has the answer and then you'll know. So it's going to be a new world completely different than this world. And this world, I say needs a big broom to sweep it clean. 
So well, wouldn't uh, wouldn't Utah Utah end up nearer to the equator? It would become kind of tropical, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, and you you probably get uh, regular rain and forest would grow. It'd be quite nice. Yeah, and uh, there must be some reason. There must be some reason that uh, the NSA put their data center here. <laughs> You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they uh, that lovely thing there. Yeah, no, um, no, that's why they're putting seed banks in, and they're doing all kinds of stuff. So um, it all, um, it's all parts of the puzzle. That's why people don't realize most of the U.S. government has already moved to Denver. The IRS, yeah. NASA, CIA, FBI, uh, you name it, they're all moved. You know, and you say, well, what's not good enough about Washington, D.C.? Well, hello, it's at sea level. <laughs> you know, what's, what's <laughs> yeah. the future of Washington? But it's the same thing. The Russian government knows that everything west of uh, Siberia is going to be underwater. Russia is one of the flattest, lowest places in the world. And, and 700 feet of ocean level is going to flood Moscow, all of the cities, all of northern Europe. And the only thing above water is going to be the Ural Mountains and the mountains on the shore of the Black Sea. And that's why they've captured Crimea and what they're fighting over there is they do not want all the northern Europeans, the ones who survived the initial 600-foot tidal waves. They don't – They don't. And the ones who will still be there as the oceans come up a foot a day, they don't want them migrating east and ending up in Siberia. The Russians do not want to see them there. So, and of course, if the if the equator goes through Alaska to Hawaii, Siberia is going to be a wonderful place. So they're starting homesteading. They're they're hiring all kinds of people who have a contracting experience, building roads, putting in uh, municipal utilities. They're getting corporations to locate factories in Siberia. They're building new uh, sea bases, and um, so they're content. They're planning to take. All of the land of northern Siberia going into Canada, because what's Canada going to do? You know, how's Canada going to stop Russia? Well, the United States is going to be trying to take Antarctica. Britain's going to be trying to take um, the new island, the new continent in the Atlantic. And then all the northern Europeans, they're like, oh, where are we going to go? So they went in and they killed Gaddafi. Why? The greatest sweetwater aquifer in Africa is in Libya. The greatest sweet oil reserve in Africa is in Libya and there's no mountain tribesmen to keep them fighting for years so that's the plan of the of Germany believe it or not and France and and um, Spain and Portugal they're all going to go take their army and they're going to seize Libya and they're going to bring everybody ashore and they're going to go inland to the mountains and they're going to build a huge base and new cities and they hope to survive that way because all of Europe will be underwater. There'll even be salt water in some of the inner valleys in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So all, all this is part of a gigantic picture and, um, you know, I thank you for paying attention, and you should really go read Zeta Talk and go look at the pictures on poleshift.ning.com. When somebody asks a question, some member of the public asks a question, and Nancy Leader takes the question, in other words, she, she said, the way she puts it is she accepts the question, and then she asks the Zetas, and it's really what she's doing is asking the Zetas, do you want to answer this question? Sometimes they say no, and sometimes they say we already answered it 20 years ago, we're not doing it twice. But if it's a new new issue and a new question, they'll answer it. And you can go read all the questions that have been accepted and the answers. And then they get moved from there to Zetatalk.com. And then she has a weekly newsletter. And there's a, there's a newsletter section. You can click on it. It has all the newsletters numbered in order. And you can uh, read through them and see all the various topics. And um, <clears throat> so... You know, like poor India, 1.25 billion people. It's India is going to slide under the Himalayas like a dresser drawer slamming shut. And they're going to die in the twinkling of an eye. The new South Pole is the Himalayas, is Mount Everest. Mount Everest is the new South Pole. Now you're going to say, whoa, Gordon, that can't be right. I mean, you said the new North Pole is going to be the eastern tip of Brazil. How can the new South Pole be Mount Everest? Because they're not 180 degrees apart, and the poles have to be on opposite sides of the Earth. Well, 
The thing is, the Atlantic is going to widen hugely and the Pacific is going to narrow hugely. And when that's done at pole shift, then the Himalayas and Mount Everest will be the opposite side of the world from the eastern tip of Brazil. Well, do you think that that earthquake in Kathmandu was uh, natural or manipulated? Oh, it was natural. That whole place is ready to go. If I lived in Nepal, I would just walk north until I was in some earthquake-stable part of Upper Mongolia in the high desert. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're talking about fixing it, and oh, my God. And then, you know, you see all the footage. They have one road that goes for miles, and the landslide's collapsing it. And they've got villages. They won't even know if anybody died or who died or if all of them died, probably for three years. But... The only thing the Zetas have said is that when Planet X separates from the sun and everyone around the world looks up and goes, oh, my God, what's that? When that happens, you've got 49 days until pole shift. Now, they've also said pole shift will either occur in April, August or December. Something about my magnetic trimesters, which I don't really understand, but that's why they said it would happen then. So it will happen in April, August, or December. Well, my wife is a psychic, and she's also a Zeta contactee, and she had a vivid dream that the first tidal surges coming in were pushing ice. Well, in August, the ice hasn't formed. In December, it's just starting to form. In April, it's just starting to break up. So if it's true that what she saw was the tidal wave pushing ice, then pole shift could be as early as next April. So there's no time to fool around. I mean, I, I told this guy, he lives right on the coast of Maine. He looks down at the ocean. And he's about 50 feet higher than the ocean. I told him 10 years ago, I said, you've got to sell your house. You've got a house on a lake inland. Go put all the money into that. And so I talked to him a, a month ago, and he goes, oh, we're thinking about selling the house. You know, well, you know, okay, uh, take your time, do what you want. But do you think that if a New Madrid fault goes off and there's 30 to 50 million people homeless and the grid goes out and, and, and there's total chaos everywhere, um, do you think you'll be able to sell your house? And that could no. be this, that could be late September, early October. So the U.S. Geological Survey would not have told the Pentagon that this is about to happen unless they had either A, some inside knowledge, which who knows what NASA, they send up all these satellites all the time. So you go well, to do the... You think, uh, do, you, do you feel if that really is going to go, you know, the Madrid fault, that that's part of the reason that they set up set up Jade Helm and the states that they have because... Absolutely. Uh, it's it, the only reason. The only reason. Okay. See, I, I hate to say this because I don't... I don't I don't think he's good for much. Um, I try to like him. I believe he is a star child, but President Obama, I don't know, somehow he's managed to really uh, mess things up. You know, uh, leadership, you need certain qualities, and I'm not sure he has them, but... Well, I think he's kind of a puppet. He's kind of a puppet anyway. So. Well, yeah. I mean, look at it. Look at the reality of it. They say they say Putin is a star child, and... Um, you know, he just met with the Pope and they were discussing immigration. And, and evidently, because the Zetas said what went on behind closed doors, they said, Putin said to the Pope, look, um, I, if I let immigrants come into Russia, I'm not going to be president anymore. Because there's certain things I have to do in order to stay in power. And uh, if I don't do them, I'm not going to be in power. And the same is true of the president. I mean, you cannot become president unless you're owned. Let's face it. You know? Um, so, but anyway, the whole thing about Obama is that he's supposed to announce pole shift. Now, um, China built these ghost cities. Have you heard about those? Oh, yeah. I'm very aware. I've, I've heard different takes on what now, that is. There are those, there are those that will... Make, that minimize it. Those there are those that'll minimize it and just say that they're doing that just to accommodate their, you know, their huge population. That they build those cities and then they seem like they're ghost cities. But then before you know it, there's a bunch of people in there. But I don't know if I buy that. Well, let me tell you, you know. what they're doing. They have no yeah. intentions of saving everybody on the South China coast. They're going to have their army close off the bridges and they're going to have people pre-selected 
to go move to these ghost cities. Now, the ghost cities, the total capacity is 70 million people. And there's probably 300 million who are going to drown on tidal surges in South China. And even Beijing's going to be flooded. So they have they are pre-selecting 70 million people and they have built cities for these people including super highways industrial parks recreational parks factories municipal supply systems uh, the grid shopping centers apartments uh, farms everything completely and people made fun of it they go look how stupid the communists are they build cities where nobody lives where nobody wants to go and uh, and nobody lives there so what's the purpose of it but they're the only government on earth that is planned for their population. And they have no intention of saving everybody. And that's why, you know, I thought, well, you know, three years ago, if Obama said, you know, now that we have these large agricultural corporations and hard, hardly anybody lives in Kansas anymore, and Nebraska's got these huge agricultural uh, company farms, we could just seize vast tracts of land and we could plan to move people away from the coasts there but they haven't done a thing not one thing the only thing they did was i noticed because i live on the coast of maine they put up some evacuation signs and you follow them and they take you to bangor maine which is at sea level so that's not going to save anybody i mean you know but they spent some money on that little project let me tell you no. Uh, so, so Japan, J Japan would just is pretty much just going to be toast or what? Yeah, it's going to. Well, see, it's going to shatter. Like, imagine that you put some pe pebbles on the table, and then you took your grandmother's fine china and you put it on the pebbles, and then you hit the china with a hammer. So some some parts of the fragments are going to be on the table. Some are going to be on the pebbles, tilted down with one end on the table and the other end up on the pebble. Japan, the best way to describe it is it's going to be shattered, absolutely shattered. And there will be some mountaintops and some small areas that survive. But, yes, Japan is toast. And Malaysia is toast. And Indonesia, the Zetas said the parts of Indonesia would, sit, would sink 80 feet under salt water. And just in their capital city, Jakarta, Indonesia, parts of the city are now under 80 feet of salt water. And they keep telling the people, like, how stupid are the people? They go, well, this is global sea rise. Well, no, there's not 80 feet of salt water in New York. There's not, um, you know, and then they say, well, it's the monsoon rains. No, it's not. It's actual the the southeastern tip of the the Asian plate called the Sudra the Sudra plate is actually sinking, and that's what's happening. And so um, Australia was secretly going out and machine gunning boats full of Malaysians and Indonesians trying to go to Indonesia. So now that was that was too embarrassing. So they stopped doing that. But what they do now is they intercept them and then tow them to um what's that island that had uh cannibals uh what is it guinea new guinea, uh, new guinea. Any, yeah they made a deal with new guinea to take all the refugees from malaysia and indonesia so but then it turns out about a month ago that there were rumors that these boats full of refugees now the refugees are spending a lot of money some of them pay five thousand ten thousand dollars each to get on these boats um, that the that the uh, Australian Coast Guard was bo boarding the boats and going on the bridge and talking to the captain and handing him five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars to turn the boat around and take the refugees back. And some of the captains of these refugee boats said uh, took the money and said, "Okay." So wow. there's no country in the world. The Prime Minister of England has gone to all the uh, Scandinavian countries and said, would you take the English people? And Sweden said no. Uh, Norway said no. Finland said no. And Denmark's going to be underwater, so they, they can't possibly say yes. And, um, and, and Sweden is started this new, um, what's the capital of Sweden? Stockholm. New Stockholm. So people wanted to know from the Zetas, what's with this new Stockholm? Well, the Swedish government, the capital city of Sweden is at sea level, Stockholm. But above it, there are mountains. So the Swedish government has seized all the vacation homes, churches, schools, 
and empty buildings of every kind, and they've emptied them all out, and they're planning to move 600,000 people out of Stockholm up into the mountains above Stockholm and call that the new Stockholm. But are they willing to take any anybody from Poland? No. Are they willing to take anybody from Latni Latvia or Estonia? No. Are they willing to take anybody from northern Germany? No. And that's the problem, is there is not one single country in the world that has agreed to take the people from any other so, country. So what's going to happen is the nationalism is really going to kick in again. The globalism is going to go down the tubes, right? Well, they might end people up just shoot, shooting each <laughs> other. Those who survive the tidal yeah. wave are going to be shooting at each other to see who gets the little rock that's left to stand on. Yeah. It's bad. And, and, uh, see now Africa is going to be completely above the waves. Um, Eastern Africa, like Egypt is going to be crushed because Africa, the northern end of Africa is going to move east. So the northern end of South America is going to move west. The northern end of Africa is going to move east. And Egypt is going to be completely below water. And Egypt is going to crumple itself into Iran and Iraq and just turn those countries symbols and um totally the earthquakes will just destroy syria and jordan and uh turkey and uh it's it's all going to be a mess so in those last days people are going to just you know i've had dreams where people take everything they think is important to them but believe me you should just have a good set of clothing good boots good backpack uh some food and and head out if that's it you survive pole shift um but now it's not safe where you are you're going to want to move and that and people are going to like take soda bottles and and empty out the liquid and and cap them and tie them together and make rafts and try and paddle their way to Africa but Africa is going to have monster diseases all these Ebola and AIDS and everything else um, is going to just just decimate the whole country. So it, even though in the movie 212, all the arcs that survived from the Himalayas, they they launched themselves to go to South Africa. Um, Africa is not a good place to be because of the diseases. There will be no medical care, no doctors. You're going to have maybe 60 percent of the population of Earth die from tidal surges. Then you're going to have 10 percent die of shock. I mean, people are just going to this. This, you know, it's like that Seinfeld show where George goes, um, when worlds collide, you know, it, their belief system is not going to handle it. it. This wasn't, nobody told them. They didn't learn it in school. And they look around them and everything is destroyed and dead and they're going to see no hope. But people like you who can see what's going on have to be ready to stand up as leaders and say, look, I know you're in shock. I know you can't believe what happened. Now go down the street and see if you can find some cans of food and bring them back. And I'm sending two other guys with you, and you're going to come back with dinner. You know, so you got to take you got to take control. You got to be wide awake. Then you've got 10% are going to die from uh, crime and looting and raping. I mean, you're going to have people taking chainsaws and cutting trees down to block roads. And when you come up to the fallen tree, they're gonna they're gonna rape and kill you and steal all your stuff. I mean, this is not. Yeah, it's not going to do much. Not going to do much good to have a car in that case, huh? <laughs> no, because as soon as you get, you know, if you come in a convoy with ten thousand people, maybe it makes sense to have a car. But if you don't, to be on your own and go to some place where they don't want to see you, you know, they're going to look and say, "Hey, we have ten rolls of toilet paper, and uh, and we have enough food for two weeks." And here comes this guy with a carload of crap. We're going to take it from him. We're not going to keep him and feed him. We don't care if he's the greatest genius at gardening in the world. We're going to shoot him and kill him. We might even wow. eat him for dinner. <laughs> you know, it's bad. I mean, it's bad. But the thing is, is I'm telling you, you can survive this. And I'm telling you that there are unselfish extraterrestrials who want to help you. And you can ask them. They can't help you consciously unless you ask them. So you can go outside at night and say, look, I know up there there's a good, the bad, and the ugly. And with the good, please contact me. I would like to be helpful at this time, and I would like to survive, and I'd like to help other people survive. Gordon, and, Gordon. Uh, yeah. Murbelly in chat just uh, said September third, twenty thirteen. Then May, uh, May. Which is it? Well, first of all, we're in twenty fifteen. So unless we're time traveling to the past, we're not going to twenty thirteen. 
I guess you yeah. mentioned something about 2013 by mistake or something. No, no. I mean, why would I? That's two years. I don't ago. make sense. I don't. I know. Yeah. So no, listen. I'm saying the New Madrid fault will go off before winter, and I'm saying the San Andreas fault will then be triggered and it will go off. So it'll be like one thing sets off the other. Now that is not pole shift, but this is the lead up to it. This is. I think we lost them again. It's just the warm up. So maybe at that time everybody's going to go. San Andreas and this New Madrid fault is just the lead up, Royce. Can you still hear me at all? I can hear you now. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So this is just the lead up. This is not pole shift. I said that pole shift is going to happen in 2016, but I don't know when. I'm thinking because of my wife's vision that it might happen next April. So is this so, kind of the, uh, you know, that's the thing. There's different uh, um, phases to this. So, so basically what it is, though, when this stuff really starts to kick in, it's kind of like, <laughs> The, where the tribulation starts, like when the if the new mm -hmm. Madrid starts going mm -hmm. and all that stuff, right? Yeah, this is okay. this is like a, a process. You're going to have all the volcanoes on Earth erupt. You're going to start having seven, eight, nine, and ten earthquakes every day. You're going to start having, um, and Planet X will be looming in the sky overhead. And forty nine days is seven weeks. So if it's going to happen in April, let's say the end of April. Then, then uh, that would be the beginning of March. You would know. You would look up and you go, oh, my God, look, there's Planet X. So I can see it with my own eyes without any special glasses. I just look up and there's the sun to the left and there to the right is Planet X. When you see that, you've got seven weeks, 49 days until pole shift. But think of all the things that are going to happen at pole shift. The St. Lawrence Seaway, Seaway is going to rip wide open. The Niagara River is going to be salt water all the way into the Great Lakes. From the Great Lakes down to the Gulf of Mexico is going to be 200 mile wide salt water. All of that's going to sink. So the way Australia is off of, of, of uh, I mean, uh, New Zealand is off of Australia, that's the way the Adirondack, the Appalachian Mountains are going to be off of the main plate. So you're going to have a continental island going from Maine to Georgia of mountains with land on both sides um, surviving. That's why billionaires have moved to New, um, North Carolina and built huge fortresses in the mountains and they've hired mm -hmm. private armies. And I tell you, if you are working for a billionaire and pole shift happens and you're th and he's still ordering you to do this and do that, wouldn't you just say the hell with it and leave with your wife and kids for your own little place where you could survive without being bossed around? Or maybe you would just take out your gun and shoot your boss and say, now all of his stuff is my stuff. So that's the beauty of selfish people is they backstab each other. They do each other in and... Um, and they're going to they're going to really do each other in. But one third of the earth, I would estimate, have made a conscious choice to live by the golden rule. And they are um, they are, uh, you know, being kind and empathetic. And uh, they always ask themselves before they do something, how would I like it if it, that was done to me? But you're going to be in terrible situations. Let's say a really charming guy comes to your little survival community and he's he seems really helpful and nice. And then at night he's molesting all the daughters or all the sons. Well, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to say, well, move along, little doggy, and he'll go over the hill to the next survival community and molest their children? You might just put him in front of a tree and, and execute him. Because what good is this person? He's a selfish person. There, no good can ever come from him. These are moral questions that we're all going to have to answer. I have guns. I hope to never shoot anybody. But if I have to, like to save my wife, then I might do it. You see what I mean? I, I don't oh, yeah. want to face that situation. But I'll also say this. If you're a really kind person, then hang that up. Put it under a pillow, darling. My wife's cell phone is going on. Hello. So uh, she's here. So, um, you know, you're going to have a situation where you, um, you know, you have uh, these choices to make um, over a situation. And there's not going to be any easy answer to it. But if you become a kind and empathetic person and you only live five more minutes and you you spend that five minutes helping somebody else, then believe me. 
Um, you know, I don't, I don't believe in God, but I do believe in the Creator. I do believe in Jesus, and I do believe there are angels. And there are also extraterrestrials who are like angels. They're not going to miss that. You know, and you're going to be in the group that graduates. So you're going to be one of those who gets reborn on the new earth and gets to experience open contact with ETs and being telepathic and living longer than before. And uh, so uh, this is something that you should think about, because if you are a really kind and empathetic person and you're very helpful to other people, then... Um, it's possible, just like in the Bible, it says the rapture, there were two in the kitchen and one disappeared, and there were two in the field and one disappeared, but not the other. The the ETs have the power, if you're a really good person and you're already living on the fourth dimensional, in other words, you're, com you're completely unselfish, they may just um, take you off to save you from pole shifts. You wouldn't even have to go through it. And then if you want to stay with them, you could. And if they want, if you want them to put you right back where you were so you can help all the rest of the people that are in trouble, they'll do that too. So, but it's not up to me. I'm not one of the extraterrestrials. I can't say, Jim, you're uh, good enough to save. I can't say that. But you could say it to yourself by how your behavior is. So if you analyze every day, try and become a better person and kinder and more empathetic, then you've done all you can do. So this would be similar to like you know the Christian concept of a millennium, That's, you know, like time of time of peace and uh, exactly, you know, to the thousand year reign you know? of Christ. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's the thing is is see the self when we move to a higher vibration. Guess what? All the selfish people can't operate; they become non-functional, so they're going to die out. So there'll be very few humans left. But then when we go to the fourth dimension, which will be some some point when 89 percent of the earth is unselfish, we will go to the fourth dimension. It will happen for the first time ever while there's life on the planet. We one minute will be in the third dimension. Next minute will be in the fourth dimension. And all these beings who we can't see because we don't have fourth dimensional eyesight, they're going to be visible to us because we'll be on the fourth dimension and they're going to help us. So this is a thousand year plan. And at the end of the thousand years. We're going to take all the things we've learned on Earth, we're going to build a fleet of spaceships, and we're going to go out to the rest of the universe, and we're going to go to each each planet and each civilization all over the universe, and we're going to say, uh, what are you up to? And they're going to tell us what their problems are, and we're going to click our fingers, and we'll say, we know what the answer to that is. We went through that on Earth. We had the hardest, most difficult time ever anybody's ever had on Earth, and we solved every single problem, and we'll tell you how to fix that. And so from then thereafter, we're going to be known, people from Earth are going to be known as the explorer race. The race that unified the whole universe in unselfishness. It's a beautiful future. Can I yeah. ask you one other? Yeah. Can I ask you one other thing, Gordon? Sure. Um, you know, uh, you you mentioned the CIA muddying the water yeah. earlier, and yeah. Um, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you know, because I mean, I've checked out uh, Zeta Talk, and I've I've done some reading there and stuff, and I, uh, you know, a lot of it makes sense to me, but you know, I it's tough to kind of discern sometimes because I read this one site where a guy said he had really read that her stuff a long, a long time. And like how some of the predictions hadn't come to pass when they, they said they were. And so she, he would, he was saying that he found out that she's controlled by the CIA. And I, so it's kind of hard to know sometimes what is, oh, no. I mean, I, listen, you know? I've, I've become, <laughs> I've become friends with Nancy later and I talked to her several times a week. Uh, and I found her, to be, she's, she, sometimes she's grumpy and harsh, but she's so single minded. All she's planning for is yeah. to get this information out about pole shift. But if you looked her up in Wikipedia last year, you would read the most awful description of anybody. It said she, she runs a cult. She's a hoax. Everything she says is lies. And guess what happened about three months ago, Jim? Somebody rewrote the whole description. Now, there are thousands of people that wrote to Wikipedia and said, we want to change this. This is wrong. And uh, <clears throat> saying that she lies and all this other stuff is, is BS. And um, they wouldn't change it. But three months ago, they changed it. Now, they, the most glowing description of Nancy Leader you could possibly imagine. And they changed it because the truth, you know, the time is over for muddying the waters. The thing is in the sky. 
Now, if I can go out and take a picture every day of the sun and show it to people and they go, wow, that's not normal. I mean, <clears throat> look at that bright caterpillar on the side of the sun. Look at look at all that red dust in there. Look at how sun ragged the sun looks. So if I can do that here in Maine, just little old me, I can go out and take pictures that prove that this is happening. Then if everyone would do that and start sharing those pictures and go, oh, look, explain that, um, then you'd, you'd all wake up. But the, the thing is, is Obama has had a tough road. He was supposed to announce Planet X in 2012. And he has had everybody from generals in the Pentagon, billionaires, you name it, sabotaging him. And one by one, without you knowing it, they have been going in and cleaning those people out. In some cases, they've just taken them and executed them for treason, for, for taking action against the president. But um, at this point, he's pretty well cleared the decks. So I would not be surprised if we do have the announcement before the New Madrid Fault and the San Andreas. But it could be that we get the New Madrid Fault and the San Andreas and then he announces it. <coughs> Pardon because, me. Well, this is part of it. <coughs> partner interruption guys but we're about to get interrupted for the end of the show okay. uh, Gordon well, got any you. last minute comments you want to make uh, yeah, it's, always, it's too late <laughs> thanks Jim thanks Royce I love you Royce hey, appreciate it, Gordon. Okay. thanks Gordon yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, caller I appreciate you calling in you cool. All right, join me next um, next Thursday folks I don't have time to tell you who the guest is going to be so it's going to have to be a surprise Yeah, that was a good show.